Iljubomer, Iljubo, Milos, the 25th of February 1919, the 20th of August 1948, was a Croatian public official who was a member of the Ustash of the Independent State of Croatia, NDH, during World War II. He served as commandant of the Jasonovac concentration camp on several occasions and was responsible for various atrocities committed there during the war. He fled Yugoslavia in May 1945 and sought refuge in Austria. In 1947, he returned to Yugoslavia with the intention of starting an anti-communist uprising. He was soon arrested by Yugoslav authorities and charged with war crimes. Milos was found guilty on all counts and hanged in August 1948. Early life Milos was born in Bozanski Semak on the 25th of February 1919. Milos attended primary school in Orosy and Bozanski Brod and finished secondary school in Suubotica. He stayed in Suubotica and worked as a municipal clerk. World War II On the 6th of April 1941, Axis forces invaded Yugoslavia. Poorly equipped and poorly trained, the Royal Yugoslav Army was quickly defeated. The country was then dismembered and the extreme Croat nationalist and fascist Antti Pavelic, who had been in exile in Benito Mussolini's Italy, was appointed Poglavnik, leader of a new state-led Croatian state, the independent state of Croatia, often called the NDH, from the Croatian, Nezavisna Drava Hrvatska. The NDH combined almost all of modern-day Croatia, all of modern-day Bosnia and Herzegovina and parts of modern-day Serbia into an Italian-German quasi-protectorate. NDH authorities, led by the Ustase militia, subsequently implemented genocidal policies against the Serb, Jewish and Romani population living within the borders of the new state. Milos arrived in Zagreb in June 1941 and met with his first cousin. Ustase commander Vajikoslav Lubrik. Lubrik made him his right-hand man and used his influence to get Milos a position within the Ustase Supervisory Service, Croatian. Ustaska Nadsorna Slusba, UNS, which ran the Jasonovac concentration camp. In October, Milos was named camp commander and promoted to the rank of first lieutenant. Milos was personally responsible for the safety of Croatian politician Vlad Komacek during his imprisonment, from 15 October 1941 to 15 March 1942. Macek seeing Milos, before going to bed, always made the sign of the cross, asked him if he feared God's punishment for the atrocities he committed in the camp. Milos replied, Say nothing to me. I know I will burn in hell for what I have done. But I will burn for Croatia. Milos was transferred to the Dakovo concentration camp in early 1942, but returned to Jasonovac and reassumed the position of camp commander in the spring. He seemed to compete with the other commanding officers in the camp to see who could torture and kill the most inmates. Milos often dressed in a white robe and pretended to be a doctor in front of sick inmates. He would sometimes take those applying to be hospitalized, line them up against a wall and slit their throats with a slaughtering knife. He seemed very proud of this ritual slaughter of the Jews. Witness Milan Fluumiani recalled. As soon as the seventeen of us arrived at Jasonovac, Ustase beat us with rifle butts and took us to the brick factory, where Ljubo Milos had already lined up two groups, while we arrived as a special third group. Mursik asked Ljubo Milos, who should I aim at first? And Milos replied, where there's more of them, and both of them pointed automatic rifles at the forty men from the first two groups and shot them all. After that, he asked the first man from our group why he came here. And when that man replied that he was guilty of being born a Serb, he shot him on the spot. Then he picked out Lofer, a lawyer from Zagreb, and asked him what he was, and when he replied, he called him out like this. I like lawyers very much, come closer, and killed him right away. Then he found out that a third man was a doctor from Zagreb, and he ordered him to examine the first two men and to establish whether they were dead. When the doctor confirmed that they were, he turned to the fourth man and when he found out that he too was a doctor, he forgave the whole group.
Milos also raised a wolfhound and trained it to assault inmates. During the summer of 1942, he traveled to Italy to complete a law enforcement course in Turin, but returned to the NDH after only 10 days. In September, he returned to Jasonovac and assumed the role of assistant camp commander. Troops under Milos's command raided several villages near Jasonovac in October 1942, looted countless homes, arrested hundreds of Serb peasants and deported them to the camps. NDH authorities learned about the raid shortly after and arrested Milos. He was not imprisoned long, as Luberic ordered his release on the 23rd of December 1942. In January 1943, Milos joined the Croatian Home Guard, Hrvatsko Domobranstvo, and was stationed in Mostar. He returned to Zagreb in April 1943, where he remained until spring the following year. In September, he was named commander of Lepoglava prison. Capture and death By the end of World War II, Milos had attained the rank of major. He fled Yugoslavia at the beginning of May 1945, and withdrew through Austria to Allied-controlled northern Italy with help from the Roman Catholic Church. He soon returned to Austria and established links with Croatian emigres there. He illegally crossed the Yugoslav-Hungarian border in 1947 with the intention of infiltrating Croatia with anti-communist guerrillas known as Crusaders, Krizlari. Milos was arrested by Yugoslav authorities on the 20th of July 1947, charged with war crimes and tried the following year. During his trial, he confessed to killing Jason Novak inmates and testified that the Ustas had drawn up plans for the extermination of Serbs long before 1941. Milos was found guilty on all counts on the 20th of August 1948 and sentenced to death by the Supreme Court of the People's Republic of Croatia. He was hanged in Zagreb the same day. See also list of fugitives from justice who are no longer sought. Notes References